Okay, so here we have a very nice, this is a, an older cell, Rabundi, low B-flat berry. So if you look back in history, all the great players and a lot of the current players are playing on low B-flat models just because they prefer the sound. I mean, look at the size of the bell. It's probably almost uh, an inch or more bigger than a low A style bell. So um, much less mechanism, no high F sharp, no low A. So very simplistic, uh, very utilitarian. Um, this one survived pretty good. Um, they normally get pretty beat up. Um, dents are taken out of the bottom, new guard put on, um, and dents taken out of the top and all straightened out. The neck looks like it's a newer neck. It's in very, very nice shape. Again, the necks get destroyed on these. So pads are nice shape. I'm not sure if you can see the pads, but uh, again, in pretty nice shape. Uh, I don't see anything that's even marginal that needs to be replaced. And again, the body's pretty straight, especially the bell section. I usually get them all just dented all the way up here. Bell lips usually smashed in. Um, this gun's got signs of it being rolled out. But um, the cool thing about these is just the sound. I mean, they just sound... <laughs> flat it's just cranking and that's where half the time in the band you're playing and that's all you have to play so anyhow uh, pretty cool but you can still rip So anyhow, pretty cool and a nice affordable way to get into a berry. Um, it's uh, under a thousand bucks, which is pretty rare for a berry. Made in USA, Elkhart, Indiana. No Far East and some unknown country, but uh, our very own. The best thing they ever did is they mounted the bell keys off the bell. Almost every saxophone made, the bell keys are coming off usually on this side, off the body, and the bell gets tweaked, you're out of business. But this one, the bell can move actually quite a bit, and since they're mounted on the bell itself, the bell keys move with the bell, which is kind of cool. So, um, anyhow, just a nice utilitarian um, low B-flat berry. <laughs> Anyhow, pretty cool. Um, comes with a real nice case, mouthpiece, nice heavy-duty, uh, you know, Neotech strap to protect your your neck and everything. So we're gonna just play a little tune, and um, we'll get on with our lives here.
And if you have to have the A, if you've got the, the big gum, you can all, you know, do the old, put the foot in the bell. And there's your A. So you just have to have a little bit of a dex, little uh, limberness, which I can't do very well. But anyhow, here it is. So a little different than what I'm used to playing, so I'm a little having trouble getting those low, finding those low keys on it. So, uh, so this would make a very nice Christmas present for somebody, and I hope you have a very nice Christmas season. So that's it. Um, if you want uh, more info, you can get it on my page from Close Up Pictures, www. Steve Gray Saxes, that's S T E V G R A Y, Saxes plural, dot com. Anyhow, there it is. Big old Barry Sax. It's ready for another generation. Uh, this is the only thing left in the schools I work on are the Bundys and maybe some of the old cons, but the Bundys just seem to last for just pretty much forever. They just keep on bending them and you can straighten them up. And it takes a lot to damage one of these, but um, if you do, um, they can be fixed. Anyhow, there it is. Big bell, big sound, big case. I've been throwing wheels on the cases every once in a while um, for the kids, but uh, anyhow, this one's not too bad. Probably a fraction of the weight of a low A. So anyhow, that's it. Um, Selmer Bundy, low A, um, pre-80s. Um, the newer ones had the screwed on key guards that always fell off and the screws were kind of crappy. Um, this has some nice heavy duty uh, soldered on tone, uh, tone hole covers. So um, uh, I'm guessing maybe early 80s, late 70s, but still honking. All right, man. Um, happy holidays. <laughs>